will have for you. As you can see, one of the kind of features that first jumps out and grabs your eyes is, is the horns. Uh, the demon hunters have the ability to have horns, a number of different horn styles, horn types, horn sizes. We'll even have the option to have no horns at all if there's something mentally wrong with you. Of course, we have some other features too. We have the tattoos that you see. A lot of the demon hunter class specific armor really kind of exposes those muscles so you can show off your awesome tats. Different types of tattoos, different shapes, different colors, all sorts of good times there. We have skin variations, some of them scaly and demonic, others normal. And then finally, we also have the different types of eyewear. So you can have the traditional Illidan style eyewear, or you can have a veil, or some other different kinds of looks. So, you know, taking a look at all that and really kind of getting a sense for what that is, let's look at what that looks like on the actual character creation screen. So right at the end there, you got to get a little glimpse into what it looks like to be a metamorphosized demon hunter. So uh, let's take a look at what that is, and let's, let's explore more what the uh, entire demon hunter experience is. And so the demon hunter, as you might have seen in the video, is a hero class. And to us, what that means is they have a very unique starting experience, a lot the same way that the Death Knight did in Wrath of the Lich King. So, Demon Hunter will both have that unique kind of experience and also start at a very high level so that you can immediately flow into the Legion content and not have to go through older content to do that. So the Demon Hunter Awoken. Demon Hunter first comes into our storyline after having been awoken in the Vault of the Wardens. The Wardens, desperate because of the Legion invasions, have thrown the switch to awaken the Demon Hunters desperate for their help because when you're going to fight the Legion, demon hunters might come in handy. It's kind of part of the name, like Alex said. But before you do that, you'll actually get to take part in the events that take place 10 years back in time at the Black Temple, when you as a member of the Illidari are sent off by Illidan on a crucial mission to the world of Mardum. And so you get to see that little world of Mardum right here take a look at a video that shows that. So that's a little glimpse, a little glimpse of what our world would look like, Azeroth, if we fail in our mission to stop the Legion. Don't want that. Otherwise, might as well all be warlocks. All right, so next up, we want to talk a little bit about specs and skills. So the Demon Hunter obviously is going to have specs like other classes will. And those specs that we're going to be talking about are Havoc and Vengeance. Havoc is the DPS spec, Vengeance being a tanking spec. So for the Demon Hunters, we're actually going to be doing two specs. The reason for that is as we thought about you know, Demon Hunters and what they might be and what the fantasy of a Demon Hunter is, clearly DPS comes to mind. I mean, it would, we would be remiss if we didn't include DPS. So that's kind of an automatic. We also thought it'd be really cool because Metamorphosis is a big part of being a Demon Hunter and we have these awesome metamorphi metamorphosized forms that'd be great to be a tank. That could be a really fun experience that makes sense with being a demon hunter also. Demon hunter healer though? Eh, not so much. A little bit weird for us, so uh, we felt like that was kind of out of the pignity of the class. So instead we wanted to concentrate the coolness and really focus on one melee spec, one DPS, and one tanking spec. So we feel like that's really the right thing for the demon hunter to make them both awesome. So here's a couple of different abilities that are unique to Demon Hunters, of course. 
The first one we have here is Fell Rush, where you can rush forward dealing a bunch of damage to anybody in your path. Generates fury, also demonic fury. That's your resource. Um, as you use some abilities, they build up demonic fury, and other abilities cost demonic fury. Fell Rush also has an interesting characteristic of having multiple charges. So you can charge multiple times in battle. We have Chaos Strike, which is a pretty basic demonic fury spender to do a bunch of damage, everybody in front of you. Chaos Nova, that does area effect damage and also stuns people in a radius on a cooldown. You can also use a ranged ability called IB. Use those cool little eye, eyewear that you have to focus those beams, zap a bunch of enemies at range. Spectrosight, that's something that's very unique to Demon Hunters and really kind of a defining trait of Demon Hunters. The ability there is when you turn on Spectrosight, and that's kind of part of why you pulled your eyes out to be a Demon Hunter, is that it gives you the ability to see through walls. So you can see your enemies through, through the walls. Come in really handy in a lot of battlegrounds. In addition, Vengeful Retreat, another removement ability that helps keep Demon Hunters really mobile. But of course, if a demon hunter is going to retreat, he's going to do it vengefully. So first, I've, we've got a couple little videos to show you what some of these abilities look like. The first one you're going to see is Fell Rush, just very simple kind of dash forward. So let's look at that. There you go. Used multiple times in succession, right away, boom, boom. Wants to travel, wants to go through and deal damage. Next up, we have the I-beam ability, give you a little sense of what that looks like. Zap. And then finally, we have an ability that's also unique to Demon Hunters to talk about that I haven't mentioned yet. That ability is something that we call double jump. So as a Demon Hunter, you're actually going to be able to jump, and then as you're in the air, jump again. Because you're more agile, you're quicker than other races or, or classes, and, you know, it's really cool and handy to be able to get over obstacles that no other class can actually get over. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Oh yeah, double jump. So next up we have a little video that has a couple of these different combat abilities mixed together to give you a little bit more of a sense of what Demon Hunter combat looks and feels like. times. All right, so hopefully you guys are excited to, to play Demon Hunters as we are. Uh, I know around the office we're all kind of crazy in the head about it, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Next up, I want to talk about the new PvP honor system. Now, as we mentioned in this video, we're doing an entirely new PvP honor system, calling this version 3. And so to set a little bit of context for that, I want to talk a little bit about the evolution of the honor system over time and you know, set the foundation for why it is that we're going to and click my first mouse button, which I'll show you on the screen right now. You can see my mouse. It's kind of like a Razor Naga. It's got 12 buttons on the side. So I just use the control button and the first button that I have to cast that every man for himself, which is my racial as a human. It's like the trinket that gets you out of a fear, stun, whatever the case may be. Uh, next we have flash of light which is just that one on my mouse and that is just the easiest way for me to reach it next I have word of glory as two and again just easy for me to reach it and my third one I have as my macro for execution sentence to be cast upon myself even if I'm targeting another enemy again I'll show you that macro shortly so that's that it's one two and three I'm just gonna go down my mouse four is going to be my emancipate which it's kind of like a toned down hand of freedom. It uh, reduces one movement impairing effect, which if you only have one on you, it's great. But if you have a couple of hand of freedom, it is the ability you're going to want to use. So that's four on my mouse, again. Five is going to be hand of sacrifice, which these are only macroed to my arena party members, one and two. And that is what I use because the mouse, again, easy for me to reach. And if I want to help a teammate out, it's just a click away on my, my thumb. Next we have my bop, which is going to be the seven on my mouse, and then this here is 8, uh, it's going to be to my party 1, and 9 is going to be to party 2. Same thing down here, myself, hand of freedom right here, hand of freedom to my party member 1, and hand of freedom to my party number 2. 
And again, I'll show you those macros shortly. Here we have my Divine Shield, which is Alt, uh, my first number one button, which I can't cast right now because I have four banners for another six seconds. But you guys get the idea for that. I don't have Righteous Fury and Turn Evil Macroed. I just have them down there in case the situation all of a sudden calls for it. I don't really want to press those buttons a lot, Righteous Fury especially, unless I want to be taking damage away from my healer uh, as far as pets go uh, for hunters. Alt 1 down here for me is a healing flash of light on my party member number 1. Alt 2 is word of glory on my party member number 1. Alt 3 is a healing for my party member number 2, flash of light. And Alt 4 is healing for party member number 2 for word of glory. So that's what I use again within reach, easy for me to do, and it's quite simply makes it so I can cast those abilities easily, just click away, and I normally wait till I have insta flash of light to heal them if they need it. Uh, Z here is a repentance, which I don't have the talented to me right now, but if I wanted to, it would simply just cast on my focus, which I'm going to make this my focus. I'll do my X, which is Hammer of Justice. So I'm going to target, I'm targeting this guy. This is my focus over here. I just press X, and it stuns that guy. So that way I don't have to leave my target. And that is again a macro I will show you shortly. Here we have Shift 1, which is ultimately my burst macro, which I will show you shortly. Shift 2 is my my defensive macro, which is just Divine Protection, and I forgot my probably my Trinket. And then Shift 3 is a Cancel macro, which I'm going to show you that actually as we go, because this one's important. Shift 3 cancels my Divine Shield, Hand of Protection, or Hand of Freedom, because those limit you sometimes, and Hand of Freedom can be taken by a mage or a, you know dispel or whatever it may be purge. So Hand of Freedom is, canceling it sometimes is it calls for it. So that's why I have that as my cancel macro, and that is Shift Three. Shift Four is just my Hammer of Righteous. I don't really use this. It's a an AOE ability that just deals out a small amount of damage to targets within uh, eight yards, kind of like Divine Storm here, which is macro to R for me. I have Cleanse as F, and that everyone knows what Cleanse does. Uh, it just removes all poison and disease effects. T, I have Lay on Hands, which I don't really use in arenas, but again, it can help you if you need it. Here is my Garrison ability, which just has my boys come and attack this dummy. So that's cool. <laughs> and then, I again, I went over all my mouse stuff. So Wheel Up is Crusader Strike. Wheel Down is Judgment. I have my Dash as my Stun. One is my Exorcism. Two is my Templar's Verdict. 3 is my execution sentence, and 4 is my hammer of wrath. So it's kind of, and 5 again is my kick, rebuke, and that's if I want to dispel some, I'm not, no, sorry, not dispel, but stop um, a spell from being cast. So that's it, guys. Pretty simple key binding. Uh, if you're interested in trying that out, go ahead and give it a go. Now let's head over my macros. General macro, let's see, yeah, this is my Bob macro for my target party number one, and you can see the way it's written out. I can write this in the description below for you guys if you'd like. Leave comments if you're watching this early. I will leave them in the description below. If they are in the description below by the time you're hearing me say this, that means that people wanted it and you got it. So if you can't, just read it from the screen and then remember it. This is it, and just let me know and I'll write it down in the description below. But essentially, you want to always put show tooltip and hand of protection so that way it can show up on the side for you so you can see what the ability is exactly in case you just forgot. And then here I have at party two, which normally is my arena member, arena party number two. And I only have one and two because threes is as far as I'm going to go as far as key bindings go for casting abilities on my teammates. Here I have my execution sentence heal, which is just targeting myself. Target equals boss pal, which is my character's name. And again, it just targets to myself in case I don't, in case I want to heal myself quickly and not hit an enemy or like have to alt, alt shift click my my name to see, to see uh, to target myself. So it just helps me a little bit in regards to that. Here I have my Hand of Freedom, which is the same as the Bop, and my Hand of Freedom, which is the same as the Bop as well. So you kind of just want to always use these macros, especially if you want to help your teammates out and be a good Paladin. It just, trust me, it helps. You always want to be versatile, and you want to be more than just wings. Here, Hand of Sack and Hand of Sack, same thing. All of your hand abilities should be macroed to target your party members at some point, and also yourself, which is not, you don't necessarily need a macro for it, but it just helps. Here I have my stun. I have Hammer of Justice in here just in case I do have it as an ability and I use Repentance or uh, Blinding Light. So it just casts it on my target focus and that is just if I am 
not stunning the guy I'm dealing all the damage on and I want to CC uh, the healer or whatever the case may be. Ah, sorry. So here's my burst macro. I, I posted it in my Empowered Seals video, so if you saw it there, don't worry about it. I will leave this one in the description below along with at least one of each of these. So this one is Show Tool Tip Avenging Wrath because this is your main ability. It's the coolest looking one anyways. Uh, Holy Avenger. You cast Holy Avenger. You cast Avenging Wrath. You cast there. I have cast Seraphim in there in case I have it uh, as my level 100 talent. And I have it in there because I want to burst with it. It makes everything even better. And then I have Cast Seal of Truth in case I'm out of the Seal of Truth. Like say in Seal, seal of Righteousness or Seal of Justice. I want to be sure to... Uh, get right back into it before I burst because that's where all the damage dealing happens. Um, oops, typing. <laughs> and then I have using my combatant's badge of victory, which for me increases my versatility by 638 for 20 seconds. Um, again, I use the increase of versatility as my main stat. I will go over stats in this as well. I forgot to mention that. But again, versatility is what I use uh, as like my main stack as far and, and along with haste. And if you made it to this point of the video, I'm sorry I didn't mention this earlier. Uh, I use haste and I use versatility when I can. This I got as I believe the only time I could get it. So multi strike was added, but I use versatility when I can because it increases your damage done and decreases your damage taken. So you got to use it. Um, those are the stats I use. So moving back to the ability, cast execution sentence is a great one, and I use that as. Uh, just kind of to finish off the burst is my one ability that helps me, again, deal damage in a burst and get, you know, helps me out. Here's my back to life when I just have use Hellstone and slash cast Flash of Light. That is just if I have Hellstones if I'm playing with a Warlock. I showed you the cancel aura macro. A cleanse macro I have cleanse and emancipate. Doesn't, not really useful, especially considering emancipate is on a global cooldown along with cleanse. So I don't even need this macro, but I just do have it. Here is my defensive defensive macro. A cast Seraphim, again, if I have it, does give you bonus armor. It does give you versatility. Um, I have Divine Protection, of course. I have Emancipate in case somehow I can cast that. And then use Primal Combatant's Vag of Victory because it grants me versatility, which again decreases damage taken. So if I do want to use it in a defensive situation, I would use it with that. Here I have my Party Flash of Lights, which I'm going to put one of, one of these at least in the description below. I have my Repentance macro, which again is Target Focus Repentance. Uh, same thing as the Bop macro. I'm oh, sorry. Fist of Justice macro. Hammer of Justice macro. Here's my own Hand of Freedom. Again, don't really need that macro. I just have it in here for some odd reason. Uh, <laughs> here are my Empowered Seals macros, which I went over in another complete other video. So go check that video out. Again, it'll probably be on my channel or uh, an annotation earlier, or right now for this video. Um, Seal of 